today I have a uh, a special guest. Every guest is special, right? But <laughs> uh, Michelle's a friend of mine, and we actually met back in 2019 at a um, conference. Yeah. I sat with you at the 100X conference in Vacaville, and that is, I think, where we actually met physically and then um, just kind of followed your journey and tell us about your business. You have multiple businesses yeah. since, since we met. A lot has trans transformed in both of our lives. We're two mm -hmm. different people now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and well, thanks so much for having me on. But I mean, just feel like I... I just any way I can support you. I know you've been on our platforms, and so it's the first time I've been able to come and uh, come back and and bless your peeps here. So super excited to share about uh, a lot of the stuff that is confusing about candles and the toxicity, and my journey into uh, having a toxin free hypoallergenic candle, and it's not been easy. <laughs> so that was sort of the journey I was beginning when I think I. I, well, right away before I met you, or we met earlier than that, I think, and then we ended up on a cruise ship together. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was fun! <laughs> the cruise ship, the, the pirated cruise ship. <laughs> oh my gosh, good time, good times okay. on that. No, I remember you were already getting your groove on at the Hundred X Conference in Vacaville, 2019. You were talking to um, Mac, right? the the um woman who has the facial business what's her name do you remember that i don't remember <laughs> oh she, <laughs> there's she so actually, many faces she has a huge business but it's all like um internet based yes yeah, yeah, most of us are building internet businesses because we want to be, you know, able to reach people like you who aren't just in our local communities. And so, yeah, it's been a journey to um, start and follow like all the doors that open up on this journey. So I have become a serial entrepreneur, an entrepreneur, I say. I have three businesses now, um, coaching business for up and coming entrepreneurs who don't know what direction to take, but they know they need to do something to launch their uh, just plans, goals, and dreams. So I have a roadmapper course that people can get on and then a launch school that people can go into afterward and launch uh, what they feel is next for their lives. And then I have this candle business and I also am just starting now a new book and podcast um, talking about the topic of grace because it seems it's so misunderstood. And I was on a just sort of... Um, a flat place with my own um, spirituality and growth. And this really just sort of kicked the door open. I'm into kicking and throat punching and I'm into like uh, scripture says, uh, uh, the spirit, uh, the kingdom of heaven suffers violent and the violent take it by force. And it, it's misunderstood sometimes that topic, but sometimes we get a little upset and cranky about the way things aren't going or are going. And so I kind of had it out with God a little bit and um, ended up getting some breakthrough on this topic of grace and um, just how we interpret what the world events and then our personal events and how we can apply grace to it and really shatter this whole notion of religion and um, open up the door of uh, what I call what is really truly the operating system of heaven. That's amazing. So your business is mm -hmm. called Atmosphere of Grace or is it different now? Yeah, so my atmosphere is the candle side. So it's creating your atmosphere that's safe and non-toxic. And then of course I have atmosphere of grace, which is creating your spiritual atmosphere that is non-toxic. So they both are about really getting a non-toxic atmosphere in a couple of different ways. Okay, so tell us about how you created a, why first mm, sure. created a pet safe candle. Uh, I, knew, I knew candles were unsafe. Yeah. But I wasn't sure when I sat down and you started telling me all the things in person that you knew, I was like, whoa, wait, you know so much more than I do. And you're not even in the pet space. How do you know this? And so can you go through it? With yeah, me? absolutely. So what would happen is like I'd light a candle or I'd go get this new perfume or something and my husband would be allergic to it. Or he'd be like, my tongue is swelling up or what's wrong? Did you, what did you just put on? Or hand lotions, especially like we'd be, you know, we lived in Minnesota 
soda at the time. And so we are always using lotions and things that were driving him, you know, uh, you know, to an allergic response. And so um, I didn't want to give up candles and I started doing some research and I was like, <gasps> oh man, this is not a small assignment. Like I thought, oh, I'll just go, I'll just go find non-toxic candles and they don't exist. <laughs> they just don't exist. And so I really felt the tap on the shoulder. Like this is your assignment. You're supposed to make non non-toxic candles. And I was like, oh no, you got the wrong girl. Like I am not a chemistry girl. I am not, I know, like, I just want to like find a product and sell it. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> so I was really like, uh, I, I was uh, pumping the brakes. I didn't want to do it. I was really like, most of you guys can understand, like digging your heels in when you know you're supposed to do something. So I finally was like, okay, I'll start. I'll try. And it really was frustrating. I will give you that. There's a lot of conflicting information on the interwebs. Uh, this is safe. This isn't safe. That is, that isn't. And even what's been more shocking to me in this journey is like the, um, the essential oil companies have uh, gone from saying that essential oils are not safe for candles to putting recipes on their sites for candles making. So that is just been a little bit shocking. So I, I would love to go through uh, kind of the whole process, if you'd like me to, of how I got to a non-toxic candle. Absolutely. I love that you had a need. Like um, I just had brunch with a girlfriend of mine and every single car they buy, her husband's allergic to. And so it's been that the formaldehydes or whatever, and they can't figure out what it is, but this has been going on for years and his tongue swells. He gets nerve yeah. nauseous. He, he, you know, gets breathing issues and, mm. and just, it, it hits his whole system. So I love that you, you recognized it and you dove into it for your husband, but also all of us get a benefit from it. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I really do believe that eventually this will replace like a, a bath and body works like in, in malls across the country, like that's where it'll eventually end up. Um, right now we are just serving uh, small organizations like yourself who want to have for your, your tribe um, candles that are non-toxic. So we're going kind of business by business, building it slowly so we don't outgrow our our capacity and frustrate our, you know, our audience too. So we're super happy to make uh, candles for you guys. So you'll see at the end, special, uh, special designs just for uh, the Puppy Phillips crowd and uh, holistic animal health. So um, I was, that was fun to make those for you, but yeah, let's dig in with the wax because I feel like that is sort of the um, you know, the glue that holds it all together. And that was the one that was to me the most confusing. Um, th there is just all of the, the toxicity that most people have heard of about a paraffin candle. I'm, have you heard of that Poppy? <laughs> is that pretty well, common? <laughs> yes, but it's, it's not, not necessarily well known. More people talk about the fragrance. Mm -hmm. Sorry. I, I probably should spotlight myself. I was going to just highlight you. <laughs> I'll, um, I'll add me. Yeah. Um, and if you guys want to join on the Zoom, feel free to do Yeah, so. I would love to take questions too. I'm not a chemist. I can't go real deep into all the chemistry, but I can tell you uh, the truth that I know uh, from the research that I've done. And um, so let's just start with the that wax, that paraffin wax. That is the most common wax that you will find in any candle. If you're finding a candle that is very, relatively inexpensive, you can guarantee that it has a paraffin wax. Now, paraffin comes from petroleum, it is a petroleum byproduct. So it comes from an oil refinery. <laughs> it comes from chemicals that um, their byproducts are toluene and benzene. And those get released into your atmosphere and create your toxic atmosphere when you burn them. And so if you've got a cheap candle made in China, um, any most of the candles that are um, in your candle shops, that those are at least partial paraffin. Um, and that I, I wish I brought this up from our, our, my 
my office. If you have a candle and you can go and swipe inside of it and, and you see a black sooty uh, residue in the candle, um, that's how you know that it is paraffin. Uh, it will, you will be able to swipe your finger and get this goopy stuff and, uh, and you'll, you won't be able to wipe it off. Hey, can I ask a favor? Can you run down and get the, um, the candle that has the sitting on my desk that has the soot in it and then one of my candles. Thank you. Sorry. I should have done this earlier. Um, but that gets in your lungs and you, you, if you try to feel how hard it is to just rub off your fingers, think of the fact that you can, you can't go in and clean your lungs out. You've got this sticky thing inside of your airways that's going to start to trap other things that you breathe in instead of your body's lungs being able to do their job and push out toxins and uh, clean them out of your body system, they're gonna be trapped there. So not only are you breathing in a toxic substance, you're also breathing in something that's trapping in, and limiting and inhibiting your body's lung capacity to heal itself and to um, heal your body from the toxins in your airspace. So that is probably why um, I'm so passionate about the wax side of it, even before the fragrance side, because yes, of course the fragrance, you know, other people can get your responses right away, your allergic responses, but the wax is sort of a hidden, hidden, like, like darkness that you don't really uh, know is actually harming you um, until you maybe start to have some lung issues or in older age, or you find yourself having bronchitis all the time, or, um, you know, when you do get sick, it's really hard to recover. You're coughing a lot. There's a, a, oftentimes that there's just trap, you trapped, uh, you've trapped something in your airways and your body's not able to get rid of it because it's got this heavy, sticky not stuff to it. So as soon as my husband comes up, I'll, I'll kind of show you the difference between a candle that burns clean and one that has that heavy, heavy soot. So paraffin wax, that is your enemy number one. <laughs> Any so, questions on that? Michelle, yeah, totally. What is paraffin? Where do they go? So, yeah, it? it's just, it is petroleum. It's a petroleum byproduct. So it's really just, yeah, those are my clean ones, but then there's a tall green one. I can't find that one. Okay. Oh, Thank you. Well, you got to explain one. And I totally remember seeing. Some... Yeah. So here's one of my candles that I make. That's good. I don't need anything else. I just need the tall one if you can find it. Um, and you can see right through it. You can see my finger through it. It's completely clean. Okay? Yeah. So that is that is how you know, number one, that this is a clean uh, wax candle. There's a little here because the flame got close. You're going to always get char with a flame. But when you have a good wax, this is what you see. That's so amazing. I love to show this candle off in a clear format because that shows you the truth of the matter that, uh, I, is that coming through pretty clear for you? Yeah, no, it looks amazing. So yeah, go grab your favorite candle shop candle and, and go wipe the inside of it. And you'll, you'll see the difference of what a clean burning candle is. So, um, so I want to just move along to the other options before I even tell you what's in here. Um, okay. so a beeswax people think, oh my gosh, be there it is. Thank you so much. Oops. Okay. So here is a candle, uh, a Yankee candle. Okay. You might think that this is the design, <laughs> but I'm going to stick my finger in here. Well, and so many people get Yankee candles. Yeah, That's so, this so is gross what, and that gets in your lungs. This is it. Yeah. So this is the Yankee candle, um, residue that's in there. And here's me trying to rub it off. <gasps> oh, it's okay. so oily. It's just getting all over every single finger. That's amazing. okay. So that's what you're breathing in. And obviously you've got it in a huge space. It's not going to get like that bad in your lungs all at once. Right. But over time, you're, you're not doing yourself any favors when you're, you're doing this to your lungs. And then so, what, so what Michelle, happens, I'm kind of cracking up because all these like Instagram glamour shots with millions of candles all mm -hmm. lit and they're like burning themselves. And you're like, that's yeah, so romantic. Oh my gosh. Now they're going to have lung damage. Yes. 
and especially dangerous like when you're white when it's right over you or you're leaning over it for a candlelight dinner or you know you're just you got it right by your nightstand at night because you want to just have that glow or you're bathing and you've got um you know, hot water, you know, and all of the maybe fluoride in the water and you're breathing in your candle and then you're breathing in fluoride water, trapping that into your lungs, right? So this, this is, if you, if you learn nothing else today, like this is, this is why don't go buy a cheap candle off the store, off the shelf is, is right here. So I'm even so if happy. it's on fragrance. So, so we're not even I, on fragrance. Because fragrance bothers me too so I would just buy unfragranced candles and then um the more I researched and the more people talked about pet safe candles I was like oh that's not necessarily great either but I didn't realize that that is disgusting <laughs> so, so moving on to like a beeswax candle so so beeswax um is obviously naturally occurring and so people think oh my gosh you got to have a beeswax candle they're the best they're the bomb and um the problem is that beeswax is 78 to 80 percent ester and so esters are fatty acids um that some people have a really strong reaction to they um they have a uh, they're a long chain without getting too chemical, but they're a long chain fatty acid. And so if you're allergic, they're found in fish. So in fish oils. So obviously we can digest them. We can in ingest them pretty well, um, unless we have like a shellfish allergy or some other sort of fish allergy, which you usually know pretty quickly. Um, people, people don't have too much of a response with ingesting them. It's a different thing to inhale them. Then they become uh, uh, what's called a carboxylic acid. And so that can be not healthy for anybody. <laughs> so, um, and then most commercial beeswaxes, there's, they're, they've got uh, paraffin in them because they're soft. They, they don't hold a shape or form very well. So they'll be um, mixed with a paraffin wax just to be able to keep them to hold their form so that they don't just tip over the minute you light them because they are so soft. So most commercial beeswax that you'll buy has some paraffin in it <laughs> anyway. They so don't, now, they don't now you've got the those. esters and you've got the paraffin burning. Okay. So Michelle, when, when they advertise beeswax candles, they don't have to tell you there's paraffin in it. Like nobody says this is a paraffin candle. That is so true. That is the frustrating thing about candles. You can pick up any candle and, and read the label and you don't know what's in it. All it says is some beautiful thing that what makes you want to buy the candle or some adorable design that makes you want to buy the candle. Or just wax. There's no regulation on candle laboring, labeling currently. It is in the works, but currently no. Wow. That's <laughs> crazy. Okay. That kind of is. <laughs> okay, so for these reasons, uh, we don't use beeswax in our candles. We don't want to have an unpredictable burn time because uh, beeswax is is bees is just uh, it's different based on so many different factors. I'm not going to get into right now, but anyway. So the really the creme de la creme is coconut wax. Coconut wax wax is completely non toxic. It burns clear and clean. Um, it has zero soot, so none of this, and won't blacken your walls, and it won't blacken your lungs, and it also has a nice slow, long burn time, and it's really good at holding a scent. So coconut wax is amazing, but like beeswax, it can't hold its form either, so you have to add something to coconut wax. So um, that's the bummer is that you have to mix it, but good news is that there is soy wax. And so a lot of candles you'll see are soy wax candles. Now, just like paraffin is not called petroleum, soy should not be called soy. Like, I don't know why they call it a soy wax candle. The, the derivative of the wax is so different than like a soy. It's, it's, it's no longer uh, has any of the hormone disrupting or endocrine disrupting properties that soy can sometimes have for people. You've heard people be like, I can't have soy products that they, um, they don't ingest well for people. So, so soy wax is not poisonous. It's, um, it's a derivative and the way that they, uh, extract it is not hormone, uh, 
disruptive. <laughs> so, uh, did I do you, okay? Like what, what part of the soy, is it the soybean? Is it the soy? Yeah, it is from a soybean oil. Okay. Okay. So um, it does not affect your hormones, however. So that is why we add some into our coconut oils. So our coconut wax. So it's a, ours is a blend of coconut and soy wax, clean as burning out there, um, non-toxic. This is, this is, I, I don't know what else to tell you, but there's, there's no other there's way. There's nothing else. It. This is it. There, there really is no other way to ensure that there is not going to be an allergic reaction from the wax burn or a toxic uh, effect on the body. And the only, the way I can tell you is like, yeah, we didn't test on animals. We tested on my husband, the human, <laughs> like he was the test subject. And I was like, you know, after I labored over this baby, obviously I'll go through the other two parts of the candle, the fragrance and the wax or the wick. I was like putting it in front of him, like, you know, and we sat there for hours and he had no reaction. So um, that obviously after years of, of, you know, having to put the candle out and toss it out was just like, well, <laughs> we did our research and it worked. And he had to just touch that Yankee candle. <laughs> oh yeah. I know. Somebody else. You're like, don't breathe it. <laughs> Actually nothing left. There's nothing left in there. Anyway, <laughs> I burned it down. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um any questions about the wax <laughs> before anything on Facebook, anybody on the live, Martha, do you have any questions so far? I can't believe that's the only wax options on the planet, but yeah, it's hard. It's hard with of, especially beeswax. I think a lot of people were such a fan of it, but when we really researched the high ester content and the paraffin to filler. Um, yeah, it just wasn't anything we were comfortable with putting in the air. Well, and, and back in like the 1800s, they used tallow, right? Tallow yeah. candles. And I'm sure those don't, like who wants to use non-vegan candles, but, <laughs> but like kill a whale, make a candle. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh. This has been really fascinating and I had no idea. So thank you very much for sharing this with us. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. It's very cool. Yes. Michelle's been a wealth of information. I was blown away when she started sharing with me years ago. <laughs> like, wait, I can't believe you know all this. So so next, what what's your yeah, let's, I'll dig into everybody's favorite villain, the fragrance. Okay. <laughs> Um, so there's things that are called VOCs, which is volatile organic compounds. So obviously we know everything toxic is made from something organic. So when you see the word organic or you see the word all natural, it's kind of a little bit of a, uh, you know, again, there's no labeling restrictions on these things, but you can have a, what's called a volatile organic compound. So these things are not stable in heat. That's the problem. They're not stable in their environment. So if you're allergic to a, uh, like a, a perfume or a dye, it's most likely because the environment that it's in was never stable for that product. And so it's, it's volatile, it's changing, it's shifting, and it's creating a toxin that your body's rejecting. So, so uh, formaldehyde, uh, alcohols, esters, phthalates, these all disrupt your endocrine system and your hormone system that um, some people react to very strongly and some people just, it, it doesn't, it doesn't, they don't see the effects of it. Um, so they can cause obviously the headaches, the dizziness, the allergy symptoms and respiratory symptoms and even cancers. So um, um, probably the biggest difference in fragrances is the synthetic fragrance. That's the ones that most people are just immediately allergic to or immediately like you walk through a section of like Macy's and you're like, oh my gosh, like I feel like I'm swimming in it. It just overwhelmed you. Those are more synthetic fragrances sometimes that have like the toxic chemicals that are so easy to see. The tougher ones uh, to deal with and the ones I think are gonna step on some toes right now is the essential oils. 
<sighs> Everybody take a deep you breath. You said it. You said it. <laughs> I said it. So we're talking about the big companies. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so essential oils are not heat stable. This is why they are in dark glass bottles and sealed. And they come with a warning that says, do not allow to heat above such and such degrees. Do not leave in your windshield or your dash and let them, right? If you see anything on your, when you purchase, they are very, very conscious of telling you that this product should not be in a heated environment. So that's the tough part about essential oils is that all your, all your waxes burn at 90 to 140 degrees. Most essential oils are only stable up until 80, sometimes 90 degrees. You might get a little overlap here with a beeswax and a really stable um, essential oil. There might be a tiny little bit of of chance that those two would, would be okay together. But in the general scheme of things, most essential oils, you will see, they don't want you to heat them above 70 degrees. Like they want you to keep them right around there. And if they do get hot, they say, keep that lid on tight, keep it airtight. Don't open it while it's hot. Wait till it's back down to the right temperature, then open open the lid because they aren't stable in oxygen. They will oxygenate, they will deteriorate as soon as they, the air hits them, as soon as heat hits them. So this is, this is what's really tough about the essential oils is that they sit in a pool of, of wax if they're in a candle. And that pool is about 100 degrees, 100 to 140 degrees. <laughs> So you are talking about two different um, combustions that are or deteriorations that are happening with oxidation and um, uh, I'm forgetting the other word for it, but so two different ways that it can break down. And what I'm, what I, the best way to imagine it in your head is sort of like reverse baking a cake. Like if you bake a cake, you're putting in all the ingredients, right? And then you mix it up and you bake it and it's a cake. Well, if you back up the process, um, if you've ever taken your cake and gotten it wet um, or you get it, you overcook it, you know, what happens? It's, it's no longer a cake. It's disgusting. <laughs> so that's what happens with your essential oils is that as they get out of the environment that they were created for, and I know they're created from high heat, right? We know that they're extracted at super high temperatures from to get the oil uh, you know, processed, but once they're processed, they are very volatile. They're no longer, um, heat, heat stable or, uh, able to perform at high levels. Like once they've been extracted, they have a heat tolerance. So that is the problem with putting essential oils into your candles. Um, so high temperature extractions don't mean that they can uh, tolerate the same heat after they've been extracted. They have what's called a flash point. So this is the temperature where they ignite or they combust and they denature. Okay, so they're going to denature in a temperature. And so there's, there's really no way, if you ask any of the essential oil companies, they will say, yeah, we just don't know what happens at that point because you can't test it. Like it's all, it's, it's what's volatile. You don't know if the sugar is going to come flying out or the flour or the egg or what, what's going to come, what's going to come apart. It, they just don't know what happens once you've pushed it beyond, but they know that it's denatured at that point. And so it's lost its ability to do its function at that point. And then how much is how long it lasts. So if you're lighting a candle and you're leaving it lit, for hours, you have, you know, it says, make sure you always start if you're going to start a candle, make sure you have time to burn it. So the whole thing glosses over. Otherwise it will just make tunnels down to the bottom of your candle. Right. So you want to make sure the whole thing glosses over. Well, if you don't do that, I mean, if you do that, it's going to take at least an hour. So you're letting that, that essential oil sit there in its denaturing process. And we don't know what's happening. We don't know what kind of toxic um, denaturing effect it's having. It just is, it is, is. And so we, it just, it isn't reliable. It isn't heat stable. So that's the bummer. Wah, wah, wah. Oh, <laughs> and, I'm shocked. And you know what? I didn't know this, that the, <laughs> it's as low as like 
80 degrees. That's what it says on doTERRA's temperature limit for safe essential oil usage is 80 degrees on their website. This so is the, I, I use essential oils in my practice and yeah, I, I know. put them in my car and they heat up in my car in the summer. Like we had a 117 degree summer this year. And so all my oils are ruined. <laughs> Yeah, so they really should be kept in a cooler or a, something to keep them from, you know, getting in that high temp. Um, and the temperature needed to pour candle wax, including beeswax, ranges somewhere between 144 to 185 degrees. Oh, so just to create the vat and to pour it into your containers, it's already ruined and toxic and yes, and having some gas off. Yes. Oh, my so, God. <laughs> there it is. Oh there it is. Yep. Um, and so that's the tough thing. It's a chemical compound that is going to go through oxidation. Oh, polymerization. There you go. There's the other one. So those two synthesis happen when you heat up an essential oil and it creates the unpredict unpredictable synthetic. So that's where you're going to, so you're sitting here over here going, oh, synthetic fragrances are naughty, bad, no, naughty kitty, but you're creating one with an essential oil that heats up. You're creating a synthetic product. So I know no one wants to hear well, that. Well, it's funny because how many mom and pop candle stores and soap stuff, and they heat all of that up, right? To make it even just the base to pour. And so it's already ruined. Unfortunately, it is. And again, there's not a lot of information out there and there's no labeling guidelines. So you're just kind of left to figure this stuff out for yourself and trust who you feel like probably has the best marketing out there. I don't know, you know, who can talk you into it. And um, that's unfortunate. So um, I know this was really disappointing for me too, because I thought, oh, that'll be easy. It'll be essential oils. I'll put essential oils. So what do you use? Okay, so glad you asked. <laughs> I'm dying to know. I'm not dying to know, but I would okay. love to know. Yes, so synthetic fragrances are a no-no. Essential oils are a no-no because they're not heat stable. And so what we need to use is all natural heat stable fragrances. And guess what? They're not cheap, but they are stable from 90 to over 140 degrees. So these bad boys are not going to change. They're not going to disintegrate. They're going to throw a beautiful scent the whole time you're burning them. Sometimes you, if you have an essential oil candle too, you'll notice, oh, it smells amazing right away. And then it sort of disappears. These heat stable, all natural oils are derived from the oil. Like they'll take the oil, they get the oil, and then they know how to make it stable without putting uh, toxic uh, products into it to keep it stable. So that is how, what we put in our scent is that these all natural stable fragrance oils that are, that are more expensive. And you would see them in your upper brands of perfume fragrances as well. Um, those higher brands that there are $300 a bottle, little baby bottle. Guess why? Because they are completely full of these fragrances that are not um, going to usually cause an allergic reaction. So that's kind of what drives perfume prices so high as well. I mean, certainly they're beyond what is um, needed in the industry, but you know, then most likely you're getting something that is, is a heat stable, temperature stable, non-toxic, um, all natural oil. <laughs> so fragrance. So it's oil. an oil still. It's and still it, an oil, but it's not considered an essential oil. No, no, it isn't because of the way it's extracted. It's not this high heat, you know, creating a medicinal thing that is an essential oil. It's a different breed. It's not meant for um, your, you know, healing properties. It's meant for scent. Okay. So how do they extract that? Yeah. And that's the... Um, those are the proprietary issues that go into labeling. That is why there is no labeling restrictions right now is because those, um, the way that they do it is so proprietary that they don't want to release it because then everybody would do it. 
but and so that's how they're getting around labeling so many things right now that's why when you buy a perfume or when you buy anything that has fragrance in it there is no labeling is because these guys have said we're not telling you our secret <laughs> so i don't have an answer for you other than um they uh they have certificates that go with it and whether or not you want to believe it or not is up to you but where we see the the fruit of it is being able to see the non-reaction in humans <laughs> you know that it they, you don't get the reaction and it is heat stable excellent that's so we don't know exactly how they do what they do but we do know that that you can test it and find that it is heat stable that stuff is out there um that you can you can test it and find that it is heat stable how they get it to be that way how they're extracting it and keeping it around there is protected by lock and chain <laughs> okay so patent protected mm -hmm. yes very protected yeah, so um yeah that is uh what we put into the candle heat stable coconut oil co or coconut wax soy wax blend with a non-toxic heat stable all natural oil and finally we make sure that the cotton wick is not laced with metal so a lot of times, especially with the Chinese, they'll do mass production in order to get that wick to stand up. They put a piece of metal in there, a tiny piece of metal. So when you're lighting that wick up, you're burning metals like aluminum <laughs> and oh my along God. with all the other garbage. <laughs> oh, I know. That's horrible. So, or some people put a bleach cotton. So your bleach, you know may not have too much toxicity in it, but it's one more thing that we don't do. We put an all natural non-bleached um, cotton wick in our candles. So there you have it. That's how you build a non-toxic candle. And that's what we did. <laughs> that's what, what we tested and found to be legit. And so, um, yeah, not an easy process, but really happy with the result. It's beautiful scents. People have told me like, oh, I love this candle. I love this scent. And so it's been a lot of fun to come up with the scents and blends. Um, all of our scents are, are blended. They're not just one scent. I've taken multiple of these all natural oils and made my own proprietary blends. So what you purchased off our website, you won't be able to find anywhere else. That's amazing. That's so cool. How long did it take you from the the inkling from God to do this to the final product? I think it took about nine to 11 months to have the product in my hand. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, and, it was and, frustrating. I'm going to tell you. Well, it sounds really hair pulling. Yeah, it was overwhelming. I was I kept saying you've got the wrong girl. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to do this. Well, thank God you stuck it out. Should I share our screen on this? Sure. So we, Michelle actually made a holistic animal insight candle. You guys. Yes, 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 yes. I go down a little ways. Yeah, there they are. So this is her, my atmosphere dot store is her link on her candle store. Well, also you have more than that. And it says my atmosphere is pet safe. And you can purchase it with that or my atmosphere is pet safe like that. And it comes in silver tins or gold tins. Do I click on it? Or... Yeah, go ahead. And it'll show. And then you have some other companies. So if you yep. guys have companies that you want to create uh, a signature brand can right. you can yes. actually Michelle can do that for you which is yeah if you're looking for client gifts or um just swag or whatever you um are interested in your your company can and then we have our own signature candles we're about sold out of the Christmas you know ones here but we got a couple left for the year so you can um you can grab ones for the season that are limited edition or you can that's kind of what they look like that um that's what I was wondering so yeah they, there you go exactly and you sent me a candle it smells absolutely amazing oh I yeah which one did you get I forget which one I sent you. um it smells 
like pine. Oh, good. Yes. That one is amazing. Yeah. I was really impressed how fragrant it was. I was just like, wow, that has a lot of scents. I'm shocked. That. Yeah. So both of those two Christmas candles there have that scent that you, that you, that I sent you. The pine. And, and is the Holistic Animal Insight candle pine also, or is that a different scent? That one, I believe is our willow candle. You can click on that one down below and see, it'll tell you the fragrance on it. Okay. So let's see. Willow blossom. Willow blossom on that one. So if you decide you're like, no, I love that scent that Poppy's been talking about, just to send a message <laughs> to myatmosphereofgrace at gmail.com with your order and we'll, uh, we'll switch up the scent just for you. <laughs> That's so sweet. And then you also have another website. So that that is your store. Yes, that's the, the store with just the candles in it right now. We have other products that we kind of pulled just to focus on the candles right now. Um, and then, yeah, that is the site you're showing there is uh, brand new. I'm sure you'll find some typos on it, but we've, uh, my team and I have uh, been really working on creating this, the other side of your at non-toxic atmosphere um, and uh, studying grace. And really just getting rid of religion and bringing in the kingdom of heaven through grace. And it's been just freeing and delightful and <laughs> so much fun. Um, so this is the beginning of a podcast and book and um, just helping people find grace and, and what it's all about. Um, Michelle, that's so exciting. I'm so <laughs> proud of you. Look how pretty. <laughs> Um, but that means a lot. You're just such a great influence and just um, amazing, just inspiration. So um, I have just been so grateful that God put our, us across from each other and next to each other at a couple different events and, um, and appreciate just your joy and stay, you're a stable presence of oil. <laughs> <laughs> I show I've been showing up here for almost three years two and a half years kind of mm. and so I'm proud of myself I didn't know I didn't know that I had a commitment issue until I created a membership and then I realized <laughs> I had a big commitment issue um Michelle I really thank you and if we have friends who need business counseling like I have a girlfriend who's an amazing artist mm. And she keeps reaching out to me for wisdom. And I'm like, you really need a business mentor. Like I'm probably <laughs> not the right one for you. We're friends, you know? And so can I send her? Oh your yeah. Email? How do people do that? Yes. So um, you can just email Michelle at faith over fear biz chicks, <laughs> faith over fear biz chicks. Uh, that is where we have our launch school and our roadmapper program. Um, and people can go through it and find out really more about their identity. We have people create an identity statement, go through their resources, their tangible resources, as well as your intangible resources that, that you may not even know you have, and then get them all in alignment. And from there, uh, take the grace, the power that is within and uh, launch into your plans, goals, and dreams with complete alignment and clarity. And um, without the confusion, we call it the carousel of confusion. And so you're like the clickbait for everything on the internet, everything on the scroll and the feed, you're like, oh yeah, I need that. I need that. I need that. And you're spending all this money trying to build something and create something that um, isn't a fit for you and your identity and your resources and what's in alignment for you. So we try to make sure people avoid what we did, all of us did when we were starting our businesses, <laughs> just kind of like going around the mountain and get it clear so that you can avoid that whole tumbleweed um, or just kind of the rabbit trail and um, get it clear from the beginning and you can launch. Then we have a launch school. So yeah, that is kind of what came out of after launching the candles, like, man, that just took way too long. Like that was just a process that should have been short and it should have been sweet. Um, aside from just creating the candle, like launching a business is a whole nother side of things. So we created the whole um, biz chick side of things. So we've had that podcast going for about two years, um, helping, helping people launch uh, 
you know, plan schools and dreams. And so now we've realized probably the biggest hindrance to launching is your atmosphere, your toxic atmosphere. That's telling you all these things or um, just holding you back. Like I always felt like when my friends, one of my friends started a business, it was just a simple t-shirt business. And I was like, who gave you permission for that? Like, how did you ever think you could go start a business? Like, I don't know. I guess you got like some sort of, oh, like I just, it never occurred to me that I could go start a business. Like I could do it. I could, I could put out a product that people need or a service that people need and would pay for. And I, I could do it with authority and conviction and purpose and success. Like I just, it did not occur to me. (laughs) I was probably still in that headspace when you and I met. And so um, just kicking all of that out again, like I told you, like, Ooh, I had to throat punch all of the things that hold us back and get people breakthrough. So yes, you can absolutely send me anybody who is looking to launch into something new in 2023. We are starting up brand new with um, a whole new uh, cohort of launch school. So absolutely. That's our, my third business is coaching. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that's so exciting. Yeah. I, um, is this primarily for internet businesses or is this also for like brick and mortar that want to like have an online? Platform? Yeah. So um, any, anything we do will have an online component. Absolutely. If you want to do the brick and mortar part of it as well. Um, but uh, the online is the easiest to get started with such a low threshold that um, it is where we begin um, when we start with launch school. Excellent. All right. Hey, Martha, since you are on the site with us, do you have any questions? No, I, we, it sounds to me like you are a really good coach and you know what you're doing. And I love how clearly you articulate it. So Uh, we were, so, uh, and I, I just, yeah, and and I do some coaching myself, but I just want to, um, well, I just want to lift you up and thank the Lord for you, and I just hope you're blessed as you go out and help people change into things that they didn't know they could be. Hmm. Oh, thank you. I received that, Martha. I really appreciate that. That's so um, sweet. Martha, I have to ask you, is that photo, did you take that photo? No. Oh my God, beautiful. I was like, wow. Yeah, I somehow my Zoom photos got wiped out and I had to find something to put up there. And um, I'm glad you like it. It's It's stunning with the Saguaro on the moon and everything. It's super fun. (laughs) Anybody on Facebook, if you guys want to ask any questions, feel free to do so. Thank you, Michelle. And thank you, Poppy. Yeah, thanks for being on, Martha. Yeah, thank you. It's good to hear you. We haven't seen you, but it's good to hear you. <laughs> okay, Michelle, I appreciate your time and your wisdom. And I always learn something from you. And so it's just, you are a blessing to all of us. Yay, awesome. So glad to be here and just help everybody understand the things that um every- kind of hidden and um, lurking and hopefully just kind of remember this vision of of the clarity you want for your life and your lungs. Oh, that's so sweet. (laughs) What a a great way to tie it in. (laughs) All should be clear. Yeah. No soot in your lives. You guys, 2023, no more soot. No more soot. Get rid of it. Amen. I guess that's for you too, Martha. (laughs) Okay. You guys have a great week. I will, um, we'll be back on next Monday. It'll be the day after Christmas. And so I don't know what we're doing. Maybe we'll do a pet prayer session, but we'll find out. All right. And I'll let you know as soon as I know. (laughs) Merry Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Bye.